I'm here with John Nemeth from, and we're in Idaho right now, and we are uh, talking about John's roots in, in, in Idaho and how he moved on to other places like uh, the Bay Area and then eventually Memphis. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you live in, in Portland for a minute? No. You didn't? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, because I remember you were working, Rick Walter was another guy that I remember yeah. told me about you early mm -hmm. on after we'd already met, but he was... He came up from Salt Lake City right. and moved to Boise. And moved to Boise, I think, to work with yeah, you. Yeah, work with yeah. me, yeah. Right, right. And, uh, and I toured with Junior Watson. Right. Now, uh, were you already touring with Junior yeah. when you met Rick? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, how did you meet Junior? Um, there was a cat named Scott Cable. Oh, that's right. And, right. And he it, was another big fan of yours. Yeah. He, he was living in Boise, working. Right. And... Uh, Anyways, he heard that Junior was going to be passing through Boise. And so, man, I worked every night of the week. I could just open the show for him. Right. You know, and I know my fans would love it. Right. So, so I did that and opened the show for him. And I had just written a song, and I put it on a CD. Back of Fat John and the Three Slims right. era. And, uh, and Watson loved that tune. Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, when I got off the stage, he asked me like, "Hey, who wrote that song?" You know, I said, oh, "I wrote that too," and and, uh, and I think, man, that shit just clicked like that. I got right. up on stage, started singing with him. Then it's like, "Hey, man, let's go out on tour." You know, let's right. go around, let's go around the country. So, and, did he help book you, or did Molyneux? Molyneux was booking. Molyneux the show. was booking, mm -hmm. right? Right. Yeah. Right. It so was fantastic. And you guys started working nationally, and then eventually you got to Europe. And yeah, yeah. With Junior them. was yeah. going over there, you know, mm -hmm. so I was going over there with him. And then, uh, and then, uh, and I moved to the Bay Area. Right. Yeah. And then, um, which is cool because everybody knew Junior in the right. Bay Area. Right. So by me moving to the Bay Area, I moved there because my, my, my uh, fiance was moving. Right. Down there. Yeah. And so I, I'm going with him. And, uh, now, did she get a job down there or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought I was going to, uh, I mean, I thought, it's just, you know, I'm going to have to find a job. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And the next thing I know, I got lucky. There was all these really great guitar players that wanted right. to have singers on their shows. Right. So I moved down to the Bay Area, and boom, I'm like gigging. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was the I remember, sweetest... Yeah. Yeah. You know, what a relief, you know, because, man, yeah. I, I'm not cut out for anything else. <laughs> and then you, got, then you got to deal with Blind Pig. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 man, you were spreading the word. Right, yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. were picking up on on what was going on. Blind Pig picked up what was going on yeah. and, and signed me up. And, man, those guys got my name out there and got me everywhere. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had Junior... On that first Blind Pig record, and Anson Thunderbird produced now, was it. Was that the first or the second? That was the second album with Junior. Okay, that's the yeah. one Anson produced. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. that's the one for right. Blind Pig. Which is a great record. Yeah. West that's Star plays that's drums one of my on favorite, it. Yeah. One of my favorite records Whoa. of yours, yeah. Man, really cool. And you had some records I remember prior to that with yeah. Junior, and mm -hmm. I don't remember what label those were on. I put one out myself. Right. Uh, I Which found is out, also a really good record. I found out about this thing called, that's when CD Baby first started. Right. And it started over in Portland. Oh, did and it? So, like, really? I found right. out about CD Baby, like, right in the very beginning yeah. of it. Good time. And so I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to cut a record. Because Watson, right. Watson was saying, man, you should cut a record, but you should cut a record with the band when we get off the road. Right. You know, we've been playing. And so I took his advice, got off the road, caught a record, and uh, and then I put it out on CD, Baby Man. And now, did you do that in the Bay or in I did that in the LA. Bay. Okay. Yeah. We All recorded right. in some place in Richmond. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, I think the guy was a, he might have been in that swing scene. Huh. Vance okay. Elders was on the album. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. guy. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that Come and Get It record. I mean that did great, and and that got on Pandora or in in the Bay Area, right? And Blind Pig saw that that was like it was getting like real big radio play right. for a unknown blues right artist, yeah. And uh, she belongs to me was the cut off right. that off that album, man. right? And that, and that thing got I think circulated yeah. and yeah, man, it's been good. I mean the music's been very good to me, yeah. And then you got again. signed up with Intrepid, I remember. Yeah. That's really 
was a big shot in the arm. That was a huge, that was a huge yeah. help. The other thing I remember was when, when Sam got sick and you ended up uh, working with Anson. That was great, man. Yeah. yeah was yeah, some I, best seeing you, ever. I remember seeing you down in, in at the King Biscuit that time. Oh, man. And you were real excited. <laughs> I was so excited. Yeah. I yeah. think the, I think the, I think uh, it wasn't too long before that I played in Greenville. Mississippi right. at the Delta Blues Festival. Right, right. Yeah. So, now, was that with Anson? It was with Anson. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, man, the audience, man, best blues audience in the world, uh, Greenville, Mississippi, man. I yeah. Mean, those, those people, blues is their communication. Oh, yeah. Blues is their religion, They're man. It's deep roots in those deep places. Deep roots, man. And, yeah. they, and, man, they loved it, man. And they, the, the support I got from the audience, man, gave me a tremendous amount of confidence. Right. As a vocalist. Right. It was a, it was definitely a game changer for me. Yeah. So was that? Would you say, in a way, that was kind of what planted the seed for moving to Memphis? Uh, I didn't. I didn't move to Memphis until years, maybe five or six years later. Right. And um, I had had a song that was doing well, like a soul tune. Uh huh. And called uh, said too much, mm -hmm. and that one was doing really really well. And uh, some of these cats picked up on it. This guy Scott Bomar mm -hmm. in Memphis, a producer, and uh, and he also plays bass. Doesn't plays he? bass, great yeah. bass player. Right. And so uh, he produced a record for me, and uh, and uh, I wasn't planning on moving to Memphis, but. I was hanging out there a little bit more than usual. Mm -hmm. And I was driving around the town. I was like, man, this is a cool town, man. You know, a lot going on, a lot of cool neighborhoods, cool culture and all that. And uh, so I was hanging out with him, checking out the town. And I was coming back to make the record. And uh, and my wife hadn't been seeing me very much. And we had a, we had our first kid. Right. So I was on tour all the time. And so I said, well, let's move somewhere else, you know, somewhere more centralized in the country. Right. I can work out of there. And uh, she asked me where. And I said, well, Memphis is a great town. Yes. And I'm going to cut a record there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we moved. To, we, we picked up and flew out there, checked out Memphis. Came back with the, I mean, yes. And did you just do one trip out there with her? Yeah, just one trip out really? there. Really? She loved the town, yeah. I was going to say, because, I mean, that's like one of those things that we, we've talked about moving, mm -hmm. me and my wife. Mm -hmm. and, and and friends of mine have told me, oh, man, if you move somewhere, you got to go out there at least like three or four times, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. just because yeah. it's like, do you really get a feel? But it sounds like because you had already had the experience of recording there, you already kind of had a jump on it. I hadn't even made the record yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, but I like I like the town. I brought her out, and she really liked the town. And uh, the weather weather's pretty good, man. And uh, which and, is amazing to me because it seems yeah. like it would be humid as hell. And the crime's a lot better in Oakland. Yeah, that's where we're living. <laughs> so you know, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah anything's, anything's a real step up from there. And, yeah. and we were trying to buy a house in Oakland, but man. You know, Prices, every yeah. time you went to try to buy something, man, yeah. somebody comes in with four hundred extra thousand right, dollars. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was a bidding war at that point. And yeah. so it's like, okay, well, yeah, you know, can move to Memphis, have a sweet life, no traffic, you know, a lot of great talent, great studios, right. And uh, so I moved out there, and I mean, I moved out there, and like literally, like a day later, wow. I went and cut the record. Wow! I, dr I drove a, Jeez. I drove a, a, one of those huge, uh, you know, U-Haul box right, trucks. Right, right, it right. broke down. Oh it man! It broke down in Flagstaff, Arizona. Oh man! Unloaded the, unloaded it, and loaded it on a different one. God Almighty! Yeah, and they sent a couple of dudes to help, but man, they weren't a help. Unbelievable! Yeah, and I drove out there, dog tired, and you know, just even. Barely a day to get my thoughts together. Went into the studio, but but working with man, I, I got to work with this Howard Grimes. Who's just, right. I mean, you talk like famous drummer. Yeah, to, yeah, you know, hanging with Gene Harris. You know, mm -hmm. hearing Gene Harris. You know, 
uh, play the piano. Hearing Howard Grimes play the piano. The drums, you mean, yeah. The drums, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, what that guy brings out of you that you don't even know you have in you. Right. Um, it was absolutely a game changer for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Did you get to be pretty good friends with him? Yeah, them? we went on a coast-to-coast -to -coast tour. Oh, that's awesome, man. He left Memphis. That's great. I mean, he hadn't been on the road since he... Uh, back to Paul Revere and the Raiders on the Tammy show. Oh, right, right. I remember <laughs> hearing about that. Wes was telling me that story. Yeah. So, yeah. isn't that crazy? So, he goes out, man. Yeah. He goes out on tour, man. And and, uh, and he's the guy on all the Al Green yeah. and O.V. Wright. O.V. Wright records yeah. and Peebles. Yeah. A lot of Syl Johnson all the, albums. All the high record stuff. Yeah, yeah. man. That was yeah. a William Bell records. Right. Sam and Dave. That's and amazing. Man. Everybody, man. Yeah. And Him and Al Jackson are probably the two yeah, most yeah. famous cats from Memphis. Yeah. And when you think about what he's soaked up as as a drummer playing behind vocalists, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you get a, you get your job because you make people sound good, right? Right. That's you right. Know? Yeah. I mean, man, he and yeah. man, he made me sound like a million bucks. Sure did. I love that guy, man. That's uh, sorry he had to pass away, but. Uh, he played like an animal till the day he died. Too, wow, man. that's yeah. something. Gave it his all. That's amazing. I think he might have been seventy-five or something really? like that when when wow. we recorded together. Crazy, man. Those are tough that's grooves, crazy. man. Yeah. So what? What was the name of that album? Memphis Grease. Okay. Yeah. So was that was the Love Light? Was it called the Love Light mm -hmm. All Stars? Was mm -hmm. that with him or not? No, that's with Earl Lowe. Oh, okay. With Earl Lowe. Uh, Rulo was a teenager, and he got the gig with Bobby Blue Band. Wow. Yeah, boy, that's heavy swinging, duty, man. Swinging, swinging, man. Yeah. I mean, that guy make you sound good. Was that when Bobby had two drummers? He had two drummers. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, man, amazing that, the, you know, uh, working with, uh, you know, working with these different drummers, man, you know, there's a different phrasing, singing, you know, you can do with each guy, man. I mean, you can play off a drummer and uh, and have so much fun. I love drummers, like Wes Starr, working with Wes Oh, yeah, Starr. I mean, Wes is the best. He man. is so much fun, man. Yeah, he's so much fun. And uh, and you really feel it when you play with the, the uh, drummers. Yeah, you man. go, wait a minute, yeah. something's not quite there. Oh, and, man, have I been spoiled. Yeah, yeah. well, oh, I remember I, when I heard, uh, I remember, you know, I kind of got to know Wes a little better mm -hmm. when, when you were playing with Anson, mm -hmm. I remember just being so knocked out with his drumming on that on that day, you know, <sighs> Man. just listening to him. And I mean, I've always loved Wes's yeah. drumming. Yeah. Since that first Sam and Anson record, yeah. it was like, I just went, this dude is something yeah. special. He can play for one person or yeah. like a hundred thousand right. people. And it's right? like he'll make it work no matter oh, what. Oh, man. You can put him in all these different yeah. situations. And that's really the mark of a great drummer. Man, yeah. Is somebody that you can put him in in a lounge job and then yeah. you can put him on a concert stage yeah. and they're going to be like able yeah. to adapt to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I felt like he was playing for like eight million people. Yeah. On my album, man. Yeah. He's like playing for like, you yeah. know, the huge audience. Man. Oh, he's phenomenal. Amazing yeah. power and. Yep. And uh, the stuff you can phrase and this, the breaking new ground, you know, the yeah. imagination. The dynamics that he throws. Yeah, you it. can go yeah. places. Yeah. You can go places with guys like yeah. Wes and Howard and Earl. And, yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I've loved every drummer I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. Man. Uh, man, the first... When I first started my band, it was hard to find a blues drummer in Boise, Idaho. I bet, <laughs> I bet it was, yeah. Man, especially yeah. when you're a kid, yeah. and all you know is kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah, nobody's really, they're not thinking on those same lines. No. Yeah. No, and when they play, when they played, you know, shuffles, you know, they did their, they did it their way, you know. Yeah. It was cool, it was hip, I, I, yeah. I liked it, you know. Yeah. It always kept the dance floor full. That was the that's right. what I love about blues, man. It's dance music, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. You know? Yep. That's true. So um so the Memphis thing happened what year? What year was it you moved there? Memphis? Yeah. 2013. 2013. Okay. Yeah. And by then you'd already won some blues awards, as yeah. I recall. Yeah. You'd won what, two blues awards? 
I think that was just as I was moving there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, do you feel like living in Memphis has been kind of a help in terms of the, the, the Blues Foundation? Man, they've always been cool, you know? Have they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Since you kind of started, it seems like. Yeah. With, with Blind Pig, yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. from day one, uh, they've been recognizing my music. Yeah. And... Um, That's kind of a rarity, you know, for West Coast people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. West Coast people tend not to get recognized the same way. Uh-huh. The, the Memphis and the, and the Northeast seem to have, and Chicago. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe they figure you got it too easy out here, man. Y'all living in sunny California. I think that's how they look at it. I think that's how they And nice weather, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, man. Napa yeah. Valley. You guys are too mellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, y'all got to complain about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You don't got no blues out there. The funny man, thing is, I think we do. I mean, oh, I think California has one of the best blues scenes. Oh, man. Dude. Anywhere. We got yeah. blues towns, man. Oakland yeah. is a blues town. Oakland is totally a blues man, town. Man, yeah. some of the, I mean, you know, some of the great players, man, came out of there, you know. Unfortunately, most of them had passed by the time I got there. But yeah, um, you had great people out of but there. The, but the residuals. Little Johnny Taylor. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Lowell Folson. Lowell Folson, yeah. You know, Mark Cracklin, all yeah, kinds man. of people. Yeah. Bob Geddens. Right? Man, what a songwriter. Oh, yeah. Damn, you know. And I he mean, recorded a lot of great stuff. Man, man, you got one of the greatest blues songwriters in the history. I mean, yeah. You got a guy from Oakland that people in Chicago are cutting his Right, tunes. exactly. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't realize about the West Coast yeah. thing. Is that in a lot of ways, the West Coast thing was as influential to the Chicago guys Oh, yeah. As as people think of Chicago being influential out here, yeah. it was just it was definitely the reverse back there because they were all trying to be Lowell and 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 McCracklin and mm-hmm. T Bone and mm-hmm. they were way into that BB. Yeah. You know, it's great music. Yeah, great, great, yeah. great music, man. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of people don't know that. And there's the whole uh, East Bay Grease scene, you know, before Tower of Power, right? You know, right. all those killers. Sly Stone. Yeah, those kids, yeah. like those Southern Soul bands with their horns, you know, right. and that sound coming into Oakland. Johnny Talbot. Yeah. Yep. And then that stuff taking off, and then, and then going out to the, you know, you get the San Francisco put on your music, right? You move to San Francisco, right. man, and, right. and the whole vibe and feeling of the Bay Area. Chambers it affects Brothers. You. It, cha- it changes yep. how you do things. Yeah. And the blues scene in the Bay Area, man, I mean, you know, when I moved down there, I knew there were some good players down there, but I didn't realize there was thousands and thousands and thousands of blues players in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, it's it's very underrated yeah. considering who you have there and the, the level of talent. Because a yeah. lot of players in the Bay, if they move to, say, Des Moines, Iowa, or mm-hmm. or or Topeka, Kansas, they'd be king shit there. Yeah, you, you know can, what I mean. You can make you can make a living playing a shuffle in the Bay Area. Yeah, Isn't that weird? <laughs> that's bizarre. Man. That's true. Yeah, still today, it's really true. There's cats out yeah. there that man. That's what they do, man. They yeah. play a shuffle, man, and they yeah. work all those clubs yeah. up and down the as bay. much as they want, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. There's a lot of clubs yeah. out there. And that was great when I moved out there because I got to play with a bunch of different cats. I got to work with uh, Mike Shermer, right? Kid Anderson, yep, and uh, um, uh, Bob played with you for a long Bob, time. Bob, yeah. Bob played with me for a long time. Bob I Welsh, I love yeah. Bob Welsh. Man, he played on uh, toured with me. Played on a couple of my albums. He played bass too. Right, right. I've used him on bass before. Yeah, and I use Kid on bass. Right, Kid's a great bass. There's a great man. bootleg out there. Some dude yeah, he's in a great Germany yeah. decides he's going to record the band that I'm taking yeah. to Europe. He releases the record in Europe. Wow. You know, doesn't want to pay me any money. Incredible. And then he puts it on YouTube for free. Jeez. So check it out. Enjoy it, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's my gift to you, you know. Uh, you can send donations to John Nemeth through PayPal. <laughs> yeah, John John Nemeth live in uh, right. Radingen, Germany. Right. But I got Junior on the record, West Star is right. on West it. West is on it, yeah. And Kid Anderson's playing bass. Right. 
Right. And That's when um, kid was still drinking. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Wes was still drinking. <laughs> yeah, man. And that wasn't a good influence either. No, probably not. No. Probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were some real fun music, man. Yeah. Junior was drinking. Yeah, that's and true. Everyone's drinking. We're everybody's drinking everybody's band. Drinking and smoking. And you guys were drinking Smoking band. cigarettes. I've heard stories. Yeah, pop, yeah, man. Yeah. All that, yeah. I think I think Vance was on some of your tours. Vance was on some Vance of those tours. West, yeah. Those were great, yeah. man. Those were great yeah. tours. Great music. And uh, Vance Ehlers. Vance Ehlers. Man, what a great, you know, the... I, I've been so fortunate. I mean, I think I'm one of the luckiest guys... You know, and you too, man. You think about oh, I have been, yeah. No, you I've been think super about lucky, you yeah. know the talent you get oh, yeah. to play with. You know, I've been kind of the the blues high school in the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, man, and I've always, I was always loved uh, uh, the energy of uh, of young musicians and uh, yeah. Um, I mean, people think I use young musicians because they're cheap. I don't. I pay them just as good as the old guys. Right. But I just like, I like the Well, there's a, like there's the a certain drive. Yeah. I think there's a drive that sometimes kind of diminishes when guys have been on the road too long. They start getting bitchy. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and, and just they don't have quite the, there's something about hungry young players wanting yeah. to go out on the road. Because yeah. it's an adventure to them. It's a new thing. Yeah, it's a new thing. You know, you've been doing it long enough. You probably yeah. feel what the grind is by now a little bit. Yeah, one yeah. Minute, too, when you're young, yeah. you're not yeah. married, man. You're yeah. you know, regionally developing, it's, you know. Yeah, it's a lot easier to... <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier to really want to go out there. Yeah, I mean, man. You know, I, I'm sure, you know, you're probably like me in the sense that you, you, you are still okay with the road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm and cool I know with I it, am man. Too. I, yeah. I I like it. Why can't yeah. you get your fans out there? So you go out yeah. on the road, you know, and you see your fans, and yeah, and they've been your fans forever. You know, you got fans from the first time you played in a place, and then you keep you you, you get more and more fans, and and uh, man, it's great. You know, I mean, and, and it's I like really family. Picked, I really picked up on that on the last tour that we did together. Just the effort that you put into when you talk to people, you don't, I mean, I know for myself, and this is mm -hmm. just speaking for me, I tend to get in this thing about, like, move along, you know, the John, uh -huh. John Mayall kind of, uh -huh, yeah, bit. Yeah. you know, move along, okay, next person, mm -hmm. but you, you will really devote yourself to the fans. I like them. Yeah. You really sit there and listen to what they got to say and, yeah. and, and, and kind of do a real interactive conversation. Yeah. It really impressed me oh. that you do that. See, because, that's just a natural thing. I well, I'm just saying it's it. a, it's an unusual thing in show mm -hmm. business. No, oh, yeah. 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 And I know like people have always told me, it's like, Hey, you know, you know, cut it off. Let's go. Let's get out of here. The band's always like, right. let's go. Right. See, and Anson's like that too. Mm -hmm. Anson's the same way. He'll yeah. sit and talk till yeah. you throw him out of oh, the yeah. club. Oh yeah. I'll sign every yeah. single record yeah. until the last record's yeah. signed. I'll talk to everybody. You know, he told me a great and, line that, that Delbert told him. He said, he said, yeah, I won this, I won this, this position that I'm in one fan at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a great way of putting it, man. Yeah, it is. It's like, you know, that's really what it takes. It takes yeah. that kind of, you know, wanting to connect with people. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't, it's kind of people feel it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I feel lucky. I And, and I think, you know, when this jaw thing had to come off mm -hmm. and I was like, man, there's no way my insurance company is not going to cover this. There's no way I'm going to pay for it. You know, I've got a wife that stays home with the kids. I've got two kids. You know, I've got overhead, you know, from, from my touring. Yeah. You know. Um, and did this happen while COVID was happening? Let's see here. Yeah, this happened while COVID was yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so it hit you at a really rough time in terms yeah, of... Yeah, things were already yeah. bad. Yeah. And, and yeah. so, uh, but... You know, and my neighbor, my neighbor said, you know, I mean, you know, John's got fans everywhere, you know. Yeah. People do GoFundMes and things like that. Do a GoFundMe and see if you can, you see if you can raise the money to pay for this. And, and uh, we put it out there, you know, and I mean, I, you know, I wasn't expecting anything, man. But, it, yeah. but the, you know, my fans, man, they added up. And what was your, what were your signs that something was wrong? 
Well, um, I went to the dentist because I went hunting and uh, got some uh, got some bullet in in the the deer burger and pulled out a filling. I bit it. Pulled out a filling. I went down to the dentist, and they had a brand new X-ray machine, one of those panoramic style. Right. So they did a panoramic, and they found a tumor in my jaw. And there was, I it, it happened so slowly that I didn't really realize that I had a couple of teeth that were moving, but nothing that was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was all down here. Jaw is just down here. We started pushing things around. Anyways, yeah, they found that tumor, and and the doctor was like, "Don't mess around with this. Don't lean on it. You know, uh, you got to. You have to, this has to be taken care of immediately. You know, and uh, it's at a stage where, you know, it could take off, and you know, it might kill you. And so I'm like, okay, what do I do? So so he 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 booked he booked a biopsy right away. And uh, and then that dentist did the biopsy. Uh, he happened to be at a, a conference in Houston and hear a guy talk about a new way of doing this. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, man, you, they'd take that out and they'd put like a plate, steel plate now, in there. Now, what is this called exactly? Oh, man, it's, it's a jaw reconstruction. Yeah, but I mean, what was the tumor? What was the tumor? Oh, man. They found out it this wasn't one cancerous. cancerous. Right. Yeah, but it, it they can turn. They can flip cancerous yeah. on, on you. Um, anyway, it's just fortunate this dentist happened to go to this conference, hear this guy talk about it, and he came back and he saw me and he said, hey, man, you have to do it this way. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're not going to do anything you're doing right now anymore if you don't do it like this. Yeah, that's unbelievable. So, yeah. Lucky, lucky. So lucky. it could have affected your both your voice and your harmonica. Playing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Could I mean, because I, mean, I could have a voice box, but if you don't have your the rest of your shit to, no. to shape it, no, you know, and your yeah. tongue's all fucked up, right? You know, and all that's uh, the apparatus that supports your yeah, voice and your yeah. heart playing. Yeah. And then boom, and then we did the surgery, and I mean, two months after the surgery, I'm in Romania doing a show. It was some work because I had to get used to it, but I could yeah. still do it. Yeah. And in some ways, I mean, a lot of the harp players I liked growing up, man, a lot of those guys, you could tell they didn't have all their teeth anyways. Right, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, true. Yeah. And so, you know, you spend your whole life trying to trying to get that sound. Right. All of a sudden, you ain't got teeth. And it's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I don't need to have those teeth knocked yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what's wild how uh, I'm not having those teeth and playing the But the way I play harmonica, I don't need my lip anyways. Uh huh. And so I'm lucky that my style of playing harp really has made a lot of this re entry. You're saying because of. Because of tongue blocking? Yeah, I what? curl my okay. tongue. You Oh, you're I a tongue curl curler? My you're tongue. a tongue curler. That's Use it as a straw. Very unusual. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Gordon Buffalo did that, too. I, yeah, I started doing that because I was trying to figure out how, like, Junior Wells and Little Walter were getting this, like, slapping effect on the harmonica. Right. So you can do that? Yeah. With you blocking? Yeah. Wow, what a trip. So I figured out how to do that. Like, take yeah. that U block and I... Pull it back. Now, do you think Junior did that too? No, I don't know what he did. I heard Lil Walter did that. Though. Yeah, you mentioned that too. Yeah, yeah, I did hear that. And I, 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 uh, I don't know, but I, I learned to do it like that because I was just trying. I thought, man, that's a really cool sound, and it's really percussive. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's a big part of the style. So yeah, it is. So, so yeah, I had Absolutely. to get that. I mean, yeah. I mean, otherwise, it was just like. I was playing the U the U block thing. That's what they call it. Yeah. And uh, um, I was playing like that, but you know, it sounded like the groove was cool. But you know, it's just uh, it's like that slap of the tongue's almost like a a, a distortion that you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It, it dirties up the. It definitely does. The disturbance in the air, man, and it makes right. it cooler on the ears. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, I've been a tongue blocker pretty much. 
most of my harmonica playing days and it's like for me it's like that's really what the tone is about mm -hmm. is that thing of having your tongue right. on the harp yeah you know makes it just expands the tone yeah so there's a lot to be said about this part of the mouth mm -hmm. being the shape of your sound yeah mm -hmm. so with without having you know with if you have jaw difficulties that's like huge. Yeah, or if you can't even move it. Right. Like if the thing won't even. Right. If you had it's just a, if I had just a steel plate on there, I wouldn't have the mobility. The muscles can't attach to that. So how long did it take thing. to heal? Three or four months for um, the tightness to start to go away. Right. Right. It was pretty tight. Right. I think the 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 muscles trying to attach to the new bone on there. Yeah. Now, at some point, I, I thought I read in her Facebook that you said you had actual pain that was starting to come in or something. Well, I had some different pain stuff. That, oh, okay. Yeah, I had uh, I get reactive arthritis. That is so weird. Do you think that's from the medication? No, no. Huh. I think it's from toxins and whatever I'm eating. Really? Yeah. Wow. I think I've built up an allergy. Yeah. I've been gone around the world and tried it all. Yeah, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a good thing to do. No. I mean, if it, it, you think about it, you change a dog's diet. Yeah, well, one day it's a mess, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, been around the world. I've tried everything that's weird everywhere, yeah, and yeah. Uh, some of that stuff, man. It'll if you're not used to it, it'll kill you. And I, I'll I be honest with you, man. I couldn't, I couldn't even do it. Nah. When I, I quit drink, I quit drinking. I quit drinking in 1984, right when I started going on the road heavy. Oh, that's good. Idea. Because I did, because I did about maybe three years where I was still drinking and doing drugs, mm -hmm. and I would go out on short trips, mm -hmm. and just that alone was difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, getting up the next day and getting in the van and and not being hungover. And I think the other thing yeah. was being a band leader for me made me feel like responsible for being a certain kind of person to the rest of the band man you know i don't know if you have the designated felt driver that. yeah i mean you know just in the sense of that if i was fucking up that was going to let give them an invitation to yeah you know oh man i yeah. mean i was i grew up with a steel in my house right <laughs> I, mean, I mean i had a different set of rules you yeah know? we yeah, lived in yeah. idaho yeah, I know. I, know I mean, you were, man, it was a different yeah, world out here. Yeah. California had moved in. There weren't like all these other rules and stuff. You know, we you guys were wild. We had out the here. whole place to ourselves, yeah, right? Were wild, yeah. <laughs> and right. so it took me a long time to to stop that. But I think it was so. It was that drinking was interjected into my DNA at such a young age sure. yeah. that you know. It was just like having relish on your hot dog or something. Right. Yeah, this is no big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Relish has got vinegar in it. Vinegar's got alcohol in it. Right. Yeah. Well, so does this, but yeah. it's just a little more. You know, you just your tolerance builds yeah. up over. Oh, right? that's true. Yeah, that's and true. when you get when you get people started on booze at such a young age, and it was no big deal in my family. I mean, right. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I yeah. mean, my 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 mom, you know. They're, pioneer people and, yeah. and my dad was an immigrant and uh you know i mean no big deal to drink right drink wine you know drink hard liquor sounds like my 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 in-laws yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no seriously i mean yeah. they were from minnesota and they were like just really hardcore <laughs> You know, I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere and you get cold as hell uh, yeah. winters mm -hmm. and you got to be a strong person to survive you that. a strong person to survive you know, Most that. people that live in that atmosphere, mm -hmm. they drink. Yeah. They drink to get through the damn winter. Man, it's true. You know? It's yeah. true, man. Yeah. And so, but when I started going out on the road, you know, it wasn't no big deal. And I, you, you put that in your hospitality rider. Right. You know, that's exactly. my bottle. Yeah. Yeah. I get my bottle every night, every time right. I go to, right. you know. Yeah. And uh, I mean, and you're in the, you know, you're in the business of moving liquor. Right. True. You know, if you're not moving True. liquor, you know. Yeah. The bar's not happy. Right. I mean, you can sell tickets, but man, if you're not moving liquor, that's something I always worry about. You know, I've mm -hmm. been sober for my whole career. And it's like, I mean, I always wonder, you know, being sober, does that affect how people decide whether or not to drink or not when they come see you? Mm -hmm. I don't know. 
to this day, I don't know. I mean, people come and see Charlie Musselwhite, who had the ultimate career, or or James Cotton. Those guys had the ultimate careers of being, you know, drinkers, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and hardcore partiers. Yeah. But, you know, they gave it up, and it seems like their crowd still would show up, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. They would still show up. Yeah, the crowd's going to still show up. Yeah. You, just, you just have to decide whether or not you're willing to you're at yeah. a point right. you know where right. you're you're not going to do it anymore right and yeah. that and that's really what it comes down to is, yeah. you know so i mean i think i think when when you get to that point you just go this is it i'm done yeah and i know i know people that drank their entire careers i mean i worked with brown and mcgee brown and mcgee gave it up like you know in 19 i want to say 1985 no, right after i did cat, man Right after I did, and he drank like a fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could put it away. Yeah, and he just one day said, "I'm done." I think when you get out of the routine, I almost yeah. feel like, you know, being a musician breeds alcoholism. You know, yeah, because you're. Oh, it does absolutely. Know? And the club owner, man, absolutely. he's sending free drinks up. Sure, to, he wants the band drinking. If the band's yeah. drinking, the crowd's drinking. Well, I always looked at it like you know the the free booze was part of the deal. That was what I wasn't getting paid in cash. I was getting it exactly. Free. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna drink my profit. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna right drink here. drink that extra amount yeah. that they're not paying. Yeah, that was really it. And yeah, and you get to a point where man, I just can't drink those profits up. You're gonna have to pay me some more money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of a good deal. Yeah. Well, let's talk about. <laughs> yeah, let's talk. A good deal. Let's talk about the. Uh, well, two things. One is you said the GoFundMe thing. You made. Enough to be able to pay for this whole thing. Yeah, like, man. Like, uh, I won't say what the amount was, or unless you want to, but it was. Yeah, I mean, pretty I think amazing. We're, we're up close to two hundred thousand. That's bucks. amazing. Yeah. yeah, that you got that and GoFundMe, and then you put the album out, and the album was just yeah did wonders for you. The album did great. And it's a great record. The record, the everybody that everybody that made the record, you know. Uh, it was interesting. Elvin and and his band they came and played Memphis in May the Bill Street Blues Festival, and uh, I was supposed to be having my surgery that weekend, but I was off. Mm -hmm. And so I came down, sat in with the band, sat in with Elvin. We were talking about this surgery, and and he and Kid they came up with the idea, you know. Maybe we should probably cut a record with John because it might be the last record he does. Right, right, right. And that's why you named it The Last Time. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe The Last Time. Maybe The Last Time. <laughs> that's a good point. We didn't yeah, know. The, that's from the positive from point the of view. From the positive point of view. Yes, maybe The Last yeah. Time. Yeah, so we we just got in there, man, and and set up in, I mean, you know, a kid's studio is twice as big as this room. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, and, we just all set up in there, man, and just cut the music, picked songs, for, you know, as we went along, and and cut the tunes, and uh, the band, it was, you know, I mean, Willie Jordan. And, you had Willie singing yeah, with you, you Bob had Al Walsh, Alabama Mike, Alabama I think. Alabama Mike singing yep. with me, kids singing harmonies, Elvin. Right. And Elvin, to me, just plays some of the greatest guitar on that record I've heard him play yes, in ages. He is amazing, man. He plays really great on that record. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, the energy behind that album is um, it's pretty impressive, you know. I think just to even be in a moment in time with somebody that's even going to be in that situation. Right. You know, uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, to, to, for, for them to be in that situation, you know, how bizarre and peculiar, you know, yeah. a, a situation to be in. Yeah. And, uh, man, everybody's just... Man, we're just bringing it, man, and and it and it comes out on tape, right? It really does, yeah. You know, it I really remember, does. You know, yeah. it's a group of guys in a room, and yeah, and kid, kids engineering, he's amazing. Man, he's yeah. really probably one of the greatest. Yeah, he's one it. of the, he's one of the best I've ever worked with, and I've worked yeah. with a number of them. Yeah, but I have to say, kid is is he's definitely by far the both both metic most meticulous mm -hmm. and fastest. There's yeah. nobody else I've ever worked with that it was as quick at you know finding stuff yeah right away and getting it done yeah it's amazing i think that's that whole live thing about blues yeah. you yeah. know when you perform like blues is a performance art and uh and so when 
you're working in probably you know he's an engineer he's working with guys he just has to press the press the record button when maybe some of the guys aren't even knowing they're being recorded you know right like, boom i'm got, did you get that yeah man i got it all so like, oh, he does it's like yeah. well, hit we're ready to go it's like man i already got it let's right. go to the next yeah, tune <laughs> yeah. he really is like that yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he's a great cat to work with man yeah. i always love working yeah. with kid and i i cut records in that studio I remember when Blind Pig was, they were frightened of how I was spending their money, you know, because I decided to go down and cut a record. Right. Like down there with Kid in his house, you know, yeah. instead of going to a fancy studio somewhere. Right. You know, That's what they're used to. Using yeah. the guys they know are putting out the. Putting you don't the even want to bring them in there either. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And I remember Ed coming down, yeah. you know, first time he came to a session. Yeah, you know, I wanted to make sure everything was working all right. You know, we were right. blowing his blowing his money, right? right. You know, and uh, he came down. Man, he was man. The moment kid hit the space bar on his little computer, man, and those little tiny speakers he had, and the sound that came out, man, Ed was like, "Okay, <laughs> yeah, this is this is great." Yeah, this yeah. is great, man. No, he's yeah. he's got the he's got the proof in the pudding, man. He's got the proof in the pudding. He loves no the music, man. You know yeah. that's what it's no, all about. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, you know, it 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 doesn't stand the test of time unless there's the love that's in it, right? Yeah, and he loves that. He loves it, man. And he he gives it to every artist that he works with, and he's done a great job on your albums. Well, the yeah, kid's done an amazing job on mm -hmm. my albums. Yeah. I love working with them. Yeah, yeah, we we just did something with Junior um, a couple weeks back. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Junior, yeah, I love yeah, Junior. With Junior man. and Kadar and, oh, and Wes. That's yeah. a great band. Yeah, really That's great. That's a great band. band. Yeah. Man. Well, we better wrap it up here. So thank you, John. Thank it you, was Mark. A pleasure. Good talking. Great hearing you, your story, man.